So today we're back with a new content video. I think you're gonna love this because we'll be talking about using an indicator. So as a beginner, I think a lot of people always use indicators and this is just uh, one of the indicators that we look at. So um, before I start, I'd like to make a disclaimer. Okay, um, we use indicators to uh, kind of like confirmation. We don't trade off uh, just indicators as it is. Okay, there are a lot of people who just uh, you know trade off indicators. Uh, we don't do that. Okay, because uh, based on experience, if we just blindly follow an indicator to trade, uh, you won't really make money. I mean, if it's so easy to make money, everyone's going to make money, right? But um, if you've been trading for some time, you realize that trading is not that easy. Okay, it takes a lot of experience and also um, you really need to understand what you are doing. So today's topic, uh, we'll teach you how to use the Bollinger Bands to trade. Okay, uh, if you don't already know, uh, Bollinger Bands is actually make up, made up of uh, a moving average. So you can see that this line over here is a moving average and uh, upper and lower bands. Okay, just a moment. I think there's something wrong with my settings. Okay, yep. Why is the lower line not showing? Just a moment, yes, okay. Okay, if uh, just in case you don't know how to set up, um, just go over to indicators, okay. Uh, type Bollinger Band, okay, over here. And then click it twice because we are using a, a double Bollinger Band, okay. The first one, the settings will be uh, one standard deviation, close, okay. Source close means, um, uh, source close means that uh, we're using the, uh, candle close for the moving average. Standard deviation, uh, if you study statistics, you understand that uh, two standard deviation away from the mean uh, has something like, I think a 90 something percent probability. So, um, I mean, I don't want to get into technical details because you don't need to know this. All you need to know is that uh, when you put a one standard deviation and two standard deviation, most of the time price should uh, remain within uh, these two bands. So as you can see over here, um, this is a 20 moving average and uh, this is the lower band, right? It's one standard deviation here, one standard deviation here. This is two standard deviation. This is the two standard deviation. Okay, then again, you don't really need to know this. Okay, the only thing you need to know regarding a Bollinger Band is how to use them. Okay, so today we'll talk about three ways on how to use the Bollinger Band. Okay, number one would be reversion to the mean. Okay, uh, we actually go into that in our trading course. Uh, if you haven't enrolled, definitely consider enrolling because uh, we come up with one entire uh, lesson on how do you actually use Bollinger Bands to time your entry and also to find good setups. So anyway, back to uh, reversion to the mean. Reversion to the mean, as the name suggests, is very simple, okay? Every time price goes to the upper band or the lower band, uh, it's expected to revert back to the mean. Of, of course, um, this is not always the case, as we'll explain later. Um, this one over here, what you see is actually a Bollinger trend. Okay, later uh, we'll go into it. But um, just generally, you can see over here that whenever price hit the top of the band, it retraces back to, you know, kind of like the middle. When it touches the bottom, it retraces again. Right, it goes to the top, especially when you see a candle, such as this one over here. Okay, just, just a moment. Okay. This candle broke out of the band and uh, after it broke out, it, it just comes or come back down. Okay. So if you look at uh, more examples, um, just a moment. Okay. The moment a uh, candle traded outside the band, it comes back down. It closes below. Okay. And then it goes back up. So the question is, when do you use a reversion to the mean? Okay. Of course, you want to trade reversion to the mean when uh, you are trading like a uh, a consolidation or when the market is range bound because by definition reversion to the mean means that price went one direction outside the band right and then it goes back you don't want to be trading reversion to the mean when you know price is doing a, a, what we call a bollinger trend over here okay this is known as a bollinger trend okay so let me just go into the second way to use it is bollinger trend okay what is a Bollinger trend? A Bollinger trend is when price trends in one direction and it's between the first and the second, uh, the, the two standard deviations. So in this case, you see that, uh, let me just delete, price is very nicely contained between uh, standard deviation one and standard deviation two, okay? So in such cases, 
what should you be doing? Okay, um, if you bought long, you should be exiting because uh, price is trending against you. So you don't want to be trading against the Bollinger trend. That's the first thing that I should take note. Okay. The second thing would be uh, if there's a Bollinger trend, you want to be taking with the trend trades, meaning that uh, if you see this trend here, okay, you definitely want to be shorting, okay, and you want to be shorting on the breakouts. Uh, very simple setups like this, okay. You can see over here, right? Uh, downtrend, right? Low, high, high. When price breaks this low, we just short it, okay? It's very simple, okay, even here so. So these are some of the nicest trades to take because it's the easiest to make money. If you're a new beginner, right, you're still struggling to make money, this is one of the things that you want to be trading. This is so simple. Just look at this. It comes down, this is support, it breaks, and it, you know, it just retests, and then it goes back down. Okay? So you want to be taking trades like this. This is the easiest way to make money. The other thing that you want to take note about Bollinger trend is that uh, if you're in a Bollinger trend and you have entered the market, let's say you entered the market somewhere over here, okay, you want to be holding on to your trade as much as possible because the market is committed. Okay, what does it mean that the market uh, is trending one direction between uh, one standard deviation and two standard deviation? This means that the market is committed. Okay, a committed market means that uh, you have very little pullbacks okay and i don't know about you but i don't i, I love to take trades that uh, have very little drawdowns okay and it's easy to hold okay you don't want to be in trades that are you know like the swings are like this you know swings are like that because uh the big money is actually made made through sitting tight on a trend and these trends are easier to hold psychologically right if you just hold all the way down okay you, you have caught a very big move. So the second way we use the Bollinger trend would be uh, Bollinger band would be the Bollinger trend. So now I'd just like to talk about the last one, which is, I think everyone kind of knows this one, the Bollinger squeeze. Okay, so um, as the name suggests, uh, sorry, let me just clear all this first. Okay, oh, no, okay, let me just clear this up okay Bollinger squeeze so as the name suggests Bollinger squeeze means when you see a contraction okay in this case now our uh, Aussie dollar is going through a contraction you see that the bands are very tight okay what does this mean this means that there's a lot of pressure being built up and uh, if there is a breakout be it up or down this is going to be a very good move so if you are into trading breakouts one of the things that you can look out for would be a Bollinger squeeze. So right now, um, if you're just looking at Aussie dollar right at this moment, um, we are keen to actually buy or sell it depends on the breakout. So um, let, let me just do a case study on uh, Aussie dollar now since we're at it together with a Bollinger band. Okay, so price structurally, um, there's a high over here. Okay, actually let me just use the full line. Okay. Structurally, there's a high here, and uh, market structure wise, there is a low here, okay, as well as here. But we'll just use this uh, low first, okay. Uh, we see a breakout at either levels, uh, we, we can take a trade. Uh, of course, we are more prone to, uh, we're leaning more towards bearish um, selling because you can see that this is a downtrend. So, this is how we can use a Bollinger squeeze, so um, in alignment with uh, our bias as well as the trade breakouts. So there you have it, the three ways. Uh, number one, is just a recap, is a uh, reversion to the mean. That's when price exceeds the Bollinger band and uh, when it breaks the uh, upper or lower band, we expect it to uh, revert back to the mean. Number two is a Bollinger trend. So when there's a Bollinger trend, then naturally reversion to the mean won't happen because uh, price will just keep uh, trending as in the case over here. Okay, so we use Bollinger trend uh, to trade breakouts and also to hold on to trades if we are already in the trade. And number three, Bollinger squeeze is when uh, the bands tighten. And if you want to trade a breakout, look for a Bollinger squeeze to uh, complement your, uh, trade, your trade idea. And then when price breaks out of the zone, you can actually enter a trade, be it a long or a short. So there you have it. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, this is a very good indicator for. Um, 
beginners and we also want to add that the upper and lower band also acts as good support and res resistance level okay dynamic support and resistance level um just realize actually we didn't cover, talk about it uh maybe in the next video we will but uh i think you should also know that uh the Bollinger Bands, the top and the bottom levels also serve as good support and resistance level. When coupled with, um, you know, structure, like in this case over here, right, uh, let me just, okay, this is the top of the band and the structure over here, okay, this, you know, is, is a very good uh, setup that you could potentially trade. 